please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we beseech your divine guidance in this meeting. Keep us ever mindful of our obligation. Grant us, dear Lord, wisdom, tolerance, and courage that we may well serve our county and fulfill our trust. Amen. Amen. Uh, I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes of July 6th. Second. Discussion? Roll? Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Wettick? Yes. Okay, do we have any public comment regarding any pending resolutions for today? If not, we will move on to our resolutions. First up is Andy Conrad, County Engineer. And where did and he, he go? And he stepped out. <laughs> so we will go to Holly Mirren, Human Resources Director. Good morning. 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 We have two personal change, two resolutions today uh, um, for HR. The first is our personal changes resolution. We have two rate increases, one in maintenance, one at job and family services, a transfer between agencies from records retention, and a resignation in finance. Second resolution is amending the table of organization for the Medina County Home. I move to approve both resolutions. Second. Uh, discussion? Roll. Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Swedek. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up we, I don't see him either. Just is, Andy. Uh, Andy. So Andy is here. I was pulled aside by the principal. I, I, <laughs> uh, I have one resolution for your consideration this morning, and it is the need to close Westfield Road uh, between Garmin Road and Seville Road. Uh, move to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll. Hambly. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Sweated. Yes. Okay. Should have the uh, weekly permits there as well. Thank yep. you so Thank much. You. Next up, we have Brett Thomas, our finance director. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. I do not have 18 resolutions Excellent. today. We only have six. Uh, first resolution is transfers for appropriations um, for the drug task force and then an increase for the prosecutors for the uh, for our extradition charges for the 4D program. Our second resolution is uh, a revenue adjustment. It appears that uh, the uh, county co uh, community corrections grant money came in to the municipal fund uh, and needs to be moved over to the uh, county's adult probation fund. Uh, our third resolution is print shop revenue for the various departments. Fourth resolution is an agreement for a youth service coordinator for the Family First Council, uh, an agreement with alternative paths not to exceed $50,000 for the uh, fiscal year July 1st, 23 through June 30th, 24. Our fifth resolution is expenses of county officials. We have an officer going for uh, canine training, and then the auditors are sending uh, somebody to the Medina County Chamber Alliance business. Uh, and finally, our sixth resolution is our weekly bills in the amount of $5,464,339.13. As usual, all bills are kept at the auditor's office for your perusal. Uh, move to approve the six resolutions. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll. Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Brett. Brett. Next up, we have Chris Jacob, our county administrator. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first resolution this morning approves a lease agreement with Medina Showbiz Company for use of the administration building auditorium. There was a previous lease with the Medina County Performing Arts Foundation that has expired. Uh, they also have disbanded as an organization, and Showbiz is uh, seeking uh, approval to um, continue with leasing of the auditorium. Um, I included a clause in there that uh, stipulates that if the building is ever sold during this 10-year period, uh, that the lease would be automatically terminated with proper notice, so just in case. Um, next resolution um, authorizes the necessity to renew a levy of an additional tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation. This is for the renewal 
of um, the social services levy that benefits the um, Alcohol, Drug, Addiction, and Mental Health Board, the Office for Older Adults, and Job and Family Services. This is a renewal for one mill um, and would be placed on the November 7, 2023 ballot. Um, this authorizes the auditor to um, provide us with a estimate of um, potential revenue to be generated from the one mill levy. There'll be a subsequent resolution um, mm -hmm. authorizing it to be placed on the ballot once the auditor responds to this particular resolution. Uh, third and final resolution this morning authorizes the advertisement for bids for the Medina County Emergency Management Agency Safety Services Facility. Uh, as you'll recall, um, EMA came in uh, with their architect last week and made a presentation to the board um, and is seeking um, authorization to proceed with that bid process. Um, we, we will work with the prosecutor's office and EMA uh, to move this project forward. Okay. That's all I have this morning. Uh, move to approve the three resolutions. Second. Discussion? Uh, yeah, I wanted to say, first off, we're not putting a for sale sign on the uh, county administration <laughs> no. building quite yet. No. <laughs> uh, I, but I, it, it does give the uh, latitude for future boards of commissioners, uh, should they Correct. desire, to be able to look at the property. We, we, we've found in the last number of years, obviously, the need for space within um, for Medina County offices has actually decreased. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly when we build the new buildings like a courthouse and so forth, that caused a uh, significant uh, movement of individuals and, and use for public space. So I think giving that latitude uh, uh, for ability uh, some future board to do that is a good idea. The second I would comment is the levy, uh, uh, the additional tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation for the human services. Obviously we're very supportive of you and, and we had a great discussion here about uh, their needs in the future and uh, the uh, renewal uh, of this. Very clearly, that's not a new tax. Secondly, it would be right now, what's the effect of millage? It's like 0.7, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, 0 0.7. And in other words, it's not being collected at one mill, it's being collected at 0 0.7. So a renewal will continue that, uh, if you will, decrease in, in the collection rate. So as our tax base increases, just as the original mill did, uh, it'll continue, the burden will still continue to go down. So I. It's always that great. Out. It's always great to do renewals and not, not ask for additional funds. Amen. So Amen. And so I, I want to at least point point that out, point that out uh, to that. And uh, third, I want to make sure that uh, certainly for the authorizing advertisement for bids, that my presumption is as they work out the details, they will be having those additions that we've suggested for the parking lot and some of the other the uh, construction right. uh, the, the options. And let's see what the bid prices look like. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for the architect to uh, turn those documents over. So super. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and I just uh, echo the, the comments too. That um, was it. It was I think our June meeting, where we had the agencies in, mm -hmm. and um, if anybody missed that meeting, I think it's it's archived because I, I, I do mm -hmm. think they make a compelling case for the need and mm -hmm. certainly the benefits of that uh, of that levy. So I think the renewal is the is the right path to go, and I think it also shows restraint on everybody's part in terms of spending, so which we want to be sure to encourage. Yes. Agreed. Roll? Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Letter? Yes. Thank That's you so much, Chris. Thanks, Thanks, Chris. Chris. Next, we have department updates. We have Greg Brown from County Home. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And it is that my current census is now at 41. Since the last meeting, we've had uh, one new resident arrive. And today, another resident arrives. And tomorrow, wow. another one. So, Good. Yes, great week. Uh, the ADC, adult daycare, still at one. However, we also have someone looking at us right now for possible attendance. I'm at the end of June, we entered into an agreement with uh, Life Care Hospice. This is our second agreement with the hospice agency. Uh, the first one was with Crossroads Hospice. And uh, Miranda Yost, the nursing supervisor, is also working with the uh, hospice of the Western Reserve for a similar agreement. Uh, these agreements give options to the agencies to present to uh, the Medina County home as a residency option while someone is under hospice care. Uh, the hospice recipient becomes a resident of, of the home, um, pays board and care, gets all the benefits of residency while having hospice care, it's a it's a win-win. Uh, staffing, still fully staffed, although 
the TO was moved, put a, an intermittent on there. It just gives flexibility to us for, um, for moving around people for vacations and things like that. Uh, some of the uh, events, the 21st of June, so we had our first summer celebration. So normally we have that men's barbecue where people come and mm -hmm. yeah, volunteer. What we did was we combined two events, the ladies' luncheon and the men's barbecue. The ladies spoke. They said they wanted steak. So okay. right. we Good. did that. And so 21st of June, first day of summer, under the pavilion, I grilled steaks. We did games, uh, access to the arts. We had live music. Good, good time got, and by doing that, the ones that wouldn't have made it over to the, uh, you know, to the park all came outside to eat, so that was good. Uh, June, July 1st, the Clutter family through Medina Kids Care did their, did their uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Christmas in July uh, combined celebration. Been doing that for over 20 years now. Uh, high energy, great snacks, prizes. Even had a rain shower blow through. Didn't even that, that didn't even stop the fun. It was it was quick and and uh, just cooled down the weather. But it was it was a great time. And then upcoming uh, for July, the 19th, uh, there's a Sharon Center concert. That's Access the Arts hosts those. On the 22nd, the 4-H Pet Pals are returning back to the home for the residents. The 24th, um, the election board's coming to the home for the residents to vote up in our library, so they're, they're doing their, their duty. Uh, and then the 25th, the Litchfield Town Band, I think going on almost 50 years now of coming to the home. Yeah, yeah we'll be there. Uh, just covering some of the donations since the last time, we're all over the board with this. Agencies, individuals, it's, it's amazing the outpouring for the home. We had uh, refurbished chairs that were um, brought in for our activity room, we had a table there for our library that needed new updated chairs and also for a sitting room. Uh, cane, snacks for the residents, hydroponic lettuce and tomatoes, hamburger buns, apple pies, and monetary donations. It's all over the board, but it's just, it's a blessing of, of the donations that come in. Uh, projects, I have no major projects for this month. However, just a, a follow up on some of the old ones. The grass is all filled in now where that, the uh, walk used to be up in the front. And maintenance is always present, but they are doing nothing major at the home, which is also good news. That's all I have. Any Super. questions? Great. Thank you so much. I thought the uh, sidewalk removal that that happened quickly and looked like it. Yeah, you said the grass is coming in. It looks great. Came in, like I said, makes the front of the look better. Yeah. and safer. Yeah, good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we have Eric Haynes from Soil and Water. morning good morning, morning. Uh, I'll start by saying thank you for all the support last month for, uh, regarding the 24 25 state biannual budget uh, we appreciate the time taken uh, and the connections made to push for optimal funding for our office as well as all other SWCDs outside the Western Lake Erie Basin uh, noted updates for that uh, 2024 the language was restored to allow for an even distribution of state match throughout the districts. Uh, we're also pleased to see a 4% increase compared to the 2023 budget. Our office greatly appreciates uh, your support and the continued efforts towards conservation and education in Medina County. So thank you very much for that support. Since our last update, our office assisted in 13 technical events, including four drainage site visits, uh, four planning commission reviews, one pond permit application, a uh, pond management site visit, a grazing and pasture land site visit, a nutrient management and stream erosion visit. Education events in the last month include a presentation on gardening for wildlife given at the Medina Library on the June 16th. On June 26th, uh, three of our staff members presented on drainage and stormwater awareness to 11 members of Granger Township and Granger Citizens Action Group. Our buyback program is up and running. We received 26 submissions so far for the program. Uh, information can be found on our website regarding how to submit uh, for the applications. Uh, this program is for residents, but we also highly encourage citizens, uh, cities, townships, and private businesses to do their part in the invasive removal efforts. 
The deadline for our Muskingum cover crop program was last Friday. Uh, so far we have four applications. Uh, we've begun the field ranking to determine their qualifications uh, for this program. Last Friday, I spent some time with the County Bee Inspector. Uh, Michael and I inspected three hives uh, owned by the County, Medina County Beekeeper Association. I encourage all beekeepers in Medina to contact Michael and schedule an inspection to ensure uh, their colony's health. Last night, a second presentation was done on gardening for wildlife at the Medina Library. This Thursday, our office is preparing for a soil types and native plants workshop out at the Highland Library. Uh, our office is currently planning our fair booth and we're looking forward to fair week. Uh, we're going to have a, an interactive kids section for our booth this year and I encourage everyone to stop in the Ag Building uh, Monday of the fair to watch the hay show which our office always assists with. Our board meeting this month will be on the 19th uh, at our office, 6090 Wedgwood. It is open to the public. And if you have any groups, clubs, or municipalities looking for a presentation, please contact our office for all things conservation based. Any questions? No. Okay. I have a question about the uh, bee inspections. Is this kind of the kickoff for that? Is this the time those inspections should be taking place? So he's got uh, kind of a window for inspection, and it goes to. Uh, kind of mid-October he can be out, but uh, call him during the summer and to get everything inspected to ensure the, not just your personal colony's health, but that includes the health for Medina County. If we keep everyone in check, it doesn't spread. Yeah, got it. Mm -hmm. And then one other question that may be beyond your scope, not to put you on the spot. If you don't know, that's perfectly acceptable. But um, Medina County has two different watersheds. Right, because of the, the divide? Uh, major watersheds. There's okay. several watersheds within Medina County uh, based on the uh, acreage. Uh, but yes, the largest two basically shed water from Lake Erie and then down to the Gulf of Mexico. Right. So in, in the um, data that you have, you mentioned acreage. Is that tracked by the, the, the population of each of those tracked by acreage or is it tracked by households or do you, do you have any of that data in your office um what do you mean by the in, in terms of if we if we looked at the county as a whole and we saw uh how how many households or how much of the county's acreage goes north versus south is that anything that you your office tracks or uh, i'd be able to find that information for okay. you we'll, we'll have another conversation about that there's just some um in some of our ongoing discussions regarding um NOACA and water quality and things like that, it's, it's information that might be helpful to have yeah. just for the future reference. Okay. We may have that in the mapping uh, overlay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think, we, I think I may be in there already. Great. <coughs> well, I'll see what I can come up with and then maybe right. touch base. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Okay, do, does anyone have any public comment today? Okay, um, I'm just going to read a notice of a liquor permit filing. The commissioners received notice of a request to transfer a liquor permit from Fenelmente LLC to Christie, Chrissy's LLC doing business as Tilted Farmer located at 7249 Wooster Pike Road, Montville Township, Seville, Ohio. This is for permit classes D5 and D6 and this is just a notification. So next we are going to move into discussion session and Andy I believe you have something? I do. <laughs> um, this is something that uh, discussed real quick, and then <clears throat> if need be, we can um, have a resolution next week. Uh, um, there's an application that came in for a lot split, and it's at 2825 um, uh, Sharon Copley Road, and uh, they they have a frontage where there's a house currently built and then you can see on the front map the the yellow line is the outline of the parcel it's slightly irregular and what you see going between the 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 little stem coming from uh, Sharon Copley this is the railroad mm -hmm. and so there's a family there that they they build a house in the back as well that's one of the children uh, they're looking to um, split off another parcel and have one of the other um, uh, kids uh, 
build a house back there and they're maintaining the farm. Uh, the reason why I'm coming before you is there is a, there, it's going to be a common driveway. Yeah. It's yeah. currently in place and is currently used, mm -hmm. but it probably does not meet all the specifications within the engineering code for the common drive. And the, the things that are of concern are more of the pull-offs, the turnouts, that sort of thing. Um, Sharon Township has provided a letter from their fire department saying they're okay with what's there. They, they've they been back there, they have access. So it, to me, it's a fairly benign request, but it is something that probably does require a variance from the engineering code. Um, if, um, if the fire department is okay with it and you, then? Well, actually at the Planning Commission uh, last week, we approved okay. the variance for the county. Mm -hmm. uh, Subdivision regulations. Oh, because it's in there as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, but so, but I've got no objections to it. The, the so I can put yeah. together a resolution for next week if you okay. wish. Yep. So, it, it, like I said, I I, took, I actually took a drive back there. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty yeah. secluded place. Um, like I said, uh, as long as the township and their emergency services were fine with it, I don't see anything. Even if somebody had to get by, it's pretty grass. You can just pull off the uh, the mm -hmm. driveway. And they, so. as I understand, also did an easement on that. There, there is an existing easement, easement for, uh, for, for the parcels. So in the future, mm -hmm. if that would get sold, that they do have the right They're all to protected, yep. correct. Yep. Yep. So the shared drive actually crosses the railroad tracks? Mm. It does. Yep. Yes, it does. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's and amazing. they even have a stop sign for it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That their insurance provider probably required I, that. Uh, my guess is Fight. the railroad did. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I'll, I'll present a resolution next week for that. Okay. Great. Thank right. you. Thanks, Andy. Andy. Sure. Chris, Jimmy. I do. Um, it's a late resolution edition, actually. Um, the Veteran Services Building expansion renovation project mm -hmm. has been. Um, scheduled tentatively scheduled to move forward for months and months and months mm -hmm. arpa funding has been tentatively set aside um to pay for the construction um ed uh, zachary has been paying some preliminary architectural fees um under twenty five thousand dollars um which is allowed by the ohio revised code um, this resolution would authorize a request for qualification process for architectural design and engineering services uh, and they're going to be the fees are going to be in excess of fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars we have to go out for an rfq mm -hmm. from interested firms uh, to submit their qualifications and then start the interview process uh, amongst the firms there are some preliminary drawings that have been done six six months ago or so um, this would uh, move the process forward um, it could be it's not necessarily going to be the uh, architectural firm that had been providing preliminary drawings um, they're obviously going to submit their qualifications for the project also um, but the uh, I think the fees will be in excess of fifty thousand dollars the architectural uh, engineering fees and this resolution would authorize us to move forward with the RFQ process for that project okay did you want to do that resolution right now if yes if uh, I have a copy of it for Thanks. Steve, did you have questions? I was going to say, actually, I'm, I'm okay with going and proceeding out of caution, but that begs the question is the, as you know, the bid limit a, or actually went up with the, the budget. When does that take effect, the new limit, do you know? I do not know. Um, and actually, next week I'm going to present hopefully another resolution to you authorizing uh, um, keeping qualification statements on file for those that are under the $50,000 number right. uh, threshold. So. Um, I can check with legal counsel. I just got an well, update from them on I'm, I'm, this I'm process. I'm we'll go ahead and proceed accordingly. Right. But I, I think since there was a, a budget, uh, it, it takes, uh, and they, uh, since deals with finance, it, it may not be 90 days. It may be the uh, immediately effect. I don't know. But I guess we'll check with legal counsel for the future. I will. Uh, and there are specific uh, limitations on moving forward with design services. Right. Uh, regardless of the, uh, the bid, bid limit. limit itself, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, well, like, as you know, they, they tinker with all these other sections of code too. Right. So at the end. So I guess yeah, legal costs. But I, I'm I'm okay with proceeding out of caution okay. sure. under the current. But I just want I guess. We'll I will verify get up, any impact that may have had. 
that have been included in the Since, budget. Certainly. Since it wasn't in our packet, I'm just going to read. It's an authorizing a request for qualifications process for the architectural design and engineering services for the expansion and renovation of the Medina County Veterans Services Building. Yeah. I will move to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll. Hambly? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Thank you very much. Just, just a question, Chris, before he goes down. Yes, sir. Just a comment from a real estate attorney, just in relation to the lease you were talking about with Showbiz. Yes. You mentioned about a contingency relating to sale. Yes. It would be prudent to put a contingency in there relating to repurposing for the building. I believe the wording is such that it includes that. So. Okay. I just think it should be there in case the commissioners would ever yes. consider bringing back the Board of Elections or sure. anybody else into the building because it seems like that space is so underutilized. Yes. It's a lot of square footage. Yes. yes. Um, did you want to talk about um, leadership? We certainly can if sure. you want to move forward sure. with that. Sure. Yep. Um, as you know, we had previously discussed the uh, possibility of continuing a uh, a leadership program uh, in conjunction with uh, Leadership Medina County. Uh, this program had been in place this previous year uh, for a 12-month program for, I believe there were 24 participants from various county commissioner offices. Um, they, uh, I'd met with Terry Green, Holly and I, Holly Muren and I met with Terry Green from Leadership Medina County to talk about the possibility of continuing the program um, starting probably late summer, early fall, and uh, we discussed some options um, with regard to formatting that program and designing that program. Those options included uh, the possibility of reducing the program from 12 months to nine months, uh, the possibility of going half-day uh, programs during that nine-month period, and finding other additional ways to reduce the cost of the program itself. Mm -hmm. Um, so at this point, I believe leadership would ask is asking us to uh, give them an answer about uh, this upcoming year and whether we want to continue with the program. Yeah, I, um, I I'm fine with um, trying this year at the half day and the nine months. So I'm fine with the cost reduction on it. I would also um, think that we would institute an application process whereby. Yeah employees who are interested in training through this program actually complete and submit an application to ensure that the participants in the program actually wish to be there and are motivated to participate. And the uh, idea is to open it up to non-commissioner county departments as well? We certainly can if you wish us to. I would think their cost center would probably be the one to absorb the uh, yes. The training mm -hmm. expenditure so my um, yeah I, I like the half day option better certainly in the, the less length of time if if we do implement a application process do we have a critical mass that we need to, to make it work if we had you know my, my only thought is this if we commit to doing it and institute an application process I don't want to find ourselves in a spot where maybe we're filling in seats to get to a, a number that that works would we have the ability if maybe there isn't enough interest to to seat a new class to to push it off into the next year to defer for a year yeah sure I, I i think that's a possibility and i'm not saying i don't know what i think we've got certain people who are anticipating the opportunity to do it again next year right who didn't do it last year so but and by I, the same token it we need a limit number so if we would get a ton of ads, right the understanding that we're only doing this many this year and your application would be considered for next year? Yeah, so I think. get a ton of apps. Well, if you open it up to the other departments, you may max out. Right. Actually, in which case then there has to be that determination as to who get, who, who ought to and who, who shouldn't. I mean, if, mm -hmm. whether it's the auditor's office or the treasurer or mm -hmm. somebody else, the engineer's office or whoever, one of the other elected officials like the, even within the courts, if they want to send somebody through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, basically make sure that uh, you know they have the opportunity if they want I they have to pay for it of course but yeah and I think the application requirement there's an implicit understanding that there's a cap that's correct know? okay uh, I just I'm more worried about having not enough people to have oh, a meaningful okay. group. Right. I, yeah. I don't know that that would happen I'm just yeah. that's the concern is if if we're 
if there is an application process and maybe there's a quick turnaround on that and we don't get to a critical mass number rather than filling in those seats to have a class could we kick it kick the can down the road another year would be my only thought so. yeah i think i certainly think that's a possibility um, okay. i think we've had some interest uh expressed already um for an upcoming session or sessions um i think the number was about 18 uh, but how many of those would complete the application um, is, I guess, the next question. So I'll be happy to work with Holly to put together an application, if you wish, at least to gauge the interest. And also we can uh, notify the other elected officials that this opportunity exists potentially for their staff members. And it, you've spoken to the uh, directors, and they've all they've had positive things to say. About and it. yeah, at our department head meeting, this subject came up, and uh, generally they were supportive of continuing with the program of some sort. And it doesn't have to be with leadership, Medina County, um, but they're interested in furthering training possibilities for their staff members. Okay. My um, th my only th the only other reservation I had in looking at the programming and things like that, I do wish the programming was uh, maybe more locally focused. There's kind of a globe. You know, I looked at the the list of 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 classes and offerings they have, and there's kind of a a global approach to leadership, which absolutely should be should be part of it. Um, but I know the signature class does a, a, a lot of you know local interaction interactive type things I know some of those were done with the with the county program last year um, but if there was more of an emphasis put on that I think that would you we'd really be on to something so as opposed to having speakers from the outside you know present via zoom and things like that so. and I think the original leadership program was more local the signature folks. program it, still, yeah. local it still is but there is yeah. a limit yeah right there are those right. that do get they, they, uh, they get more applications than positions yep. and those are obviously all day events yeah too, and so it doesn't fit within that parameter it's more aspirational is what I'm saying well, it's so more I, community based right, right. I, I mean my my comment yeah, yeah. there is oh, more yeah. aspirational about yeah. where it could go eventually because uh, just looking at that at the breakdown of the offerings for this type of a program and, they were more well the content actually could work you could work with uh, Terry Green on the content mm -hmm. of it to add, add a little bit more of a local component yep. to some of those days yep I think that'd be great all right, we'll get moving on the application uh, format and uh, we'll keep you posted on uh, what we're generating in terms of interest from from departments. We'll go Sounds from there. Good. Anything else? Thanks, Chris. Uh, that's it right now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does anybody else have anything? Okay, Steve. Uh, just a, a emergency management met with the, the civil council last night and just informed by the mayor Carter who's here uh, that they did approve our agreement um, meeting with the Chatham I know uh, uh, the law director uh, Lisiak had said that uh, Lodi village had passed there so we know with uh, some assurances that uh, we're certainly at the at the ratification level of mm -hmm. 14 so but we'll continue uh, to to build that um boston road interchange continues to be uh, a big topic up in up in uh, Br brunswick area uh, social media and so forth i know uh, representative uh, sharon ray had provided a uh, handout i think i shared that with you mm -hmm. that regarding some of the research her office and, and melanie miller uh, representative melanie miller had at uh, done that will be uh, in there indicating um, the ability uh, of odot and in terms of uh, um, determining if there is going to be any kind of interchange with or without the cooperation of, uh, of Brunswick City but that is an ongoing dynamic obviously a lot of people are still um, in that area hoping that uh, the NWACA process allows greater opportunity for the public to have a, a voice and I, that's where Aaron comes in <laughs> yeah <laughs> comes into that so okay. i guess you can kind of brief everybody as to where we're at with that yeah it's want. and and i think i don't remember if it came up last meeting or not but they, but noaka its process is going to be followed and i've heard that in no uncertain terms which requires at least two approvals at the board level which which may be a little well to say the least that, that, that those might be difficult to attain because it's certain structural things with the interchange policy um, you know, frankly, they create barriers to getting these done, even when when the municipalities want them to be done. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so th that part of the process isn't going and can't be bypassed through this the the, the statute. So, um, that's the last update we have on that. 
um, but we've been in close contact with NOACA and, and have helped um, you know connect our partners in Brunswick City Council with the folks at NOACA that they need to be in contact with and um, but yeah a lot, a lot remains to be seen on that I think the the initial developments of it versus where it all ends up are probably two very different uh, different things so that's all I got I just do you have anything else? I do, um, and Rebecca's here from the sheriff's office, and I'll, I'll take the lead if, you, if there's anything you have to add. You're welcome to, to come up here, too. But um, we've been approached by Aramark, who is the food service provider at the jail, mm -hmm. um, and Sheriff Grice and myself and, and Chris had a meeting with them. Um, the jail does, by any objective standard, the jail has a very favorable agreement in place with Aramark right now for the provision of meals. Um, Aramark has uh, approached us, uh, and, and most recently it was renewed at the end of 2022. So it's it's been renewed by them. They took over contract from a, another service provider a few years back, um, but a condition of that was them honoring the price that was in that contract. So uh, after renewing in at the end of last year, they approached us a month or two ago about the possibility of triggering what's called the material adverse change language provision in the contract, which would allow the agreement to be terminated uh, so they could so we could adjust the pricing from the existing contract. And we met with them and it was a cordial meeting, but um, you know our inclination, my inclination, sheriff's inclination, and, and Mr. Jacobs all were pretty pretty well aligned. In addition to co collaborating, coordinating with uh, the prosecutor's office, we don't believe we've got the authority to terminate that agreement or to adjust the pricing on it without it going out for bids. So um, we've we've communicated that to them. Their follow up was basically said, well, could you could you uh, mutually terminate it, trigger this material adverse change? And um, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I, I'm inclined to not <laughs> terminate to do the mutual the, the mutual termination. It doesn't mean that they won't be able to terminate. I mean, the end result of this, I, I think, is pretty clearly going to be that it's going to go back out, out for bids. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the only uh, option we have as a board is to is to handle it that way. We can't. And what be, is the downside to going out for the bid? It's Which going is, to become more expensive. Uh, the, the, What's the notification requirement under, under Won't the it anyway contract? If they well, terminate? Yes. That, and so the, either way it goes to bids. I think there was some there was some discussion about here's a number that we could we could price this at, but it wouldn't necessarily be our bid number. You know, the, the <laughs> that didn't feel very comfortable to me to, to say we're gonna accept that. And I had another uh, I had some other concerns too when I reviewed Aramark's um, investor relations materials where they were talking to their investors about how much profit they're making on renegotiating contracts. <laughs> now again, that's that's not to say that ours aren't uh, probably below market, they are. Um, but to unilaterally say to a private industry that's shareholder owned, yes, we'll, we'll give you more county money even though the contract says we don't have to, I just have a problem with that. So um, that's where that's that's where the discussions have been so far. Well, and then, then if we went out to bid, then you know October is budget hearing. It, you, you know you could plan for it in the sheriff's budget, and it, it, obviously we're going to have an increase. So it kind of times okay with budget hearings well, and what, knowing what's, what I guess, the new What's prices. the notification and what's the time frame that you could do a, a bid, a turnaround? I don't. Sixty days. Yeah, I don't know the exact answer. Do you know that, Chris? What what they're? Uh, I think we're going to have to work in cooperation with Aramark to facilitate that. Right. Yeah. Serving meals uh, to those two facilities, because uh, it's a detention facility, also a juvenile detention. Right. So, yeah. Um, there is a mutual termination clause. There's also their ability, I believe, to terminate um, and provide 60-day notice. So it's okay. yeah, 60 days. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and just one note that market uh, material <coughs> adverse change clause is not contained. Is contained in the county home contract. Oh, that's interesting. But they've not asked to modify those agreement terms of the county home and reduce right. the prices uh, significantly higher. Most mostly due to the fact it's a lower population. Right. Uh, right. Uh, 
But the other and and I've the other thing that we did hear from them in our at least the last communication where they where they were asking us to to agree to mutually terminate, which we're we wanted to have this discussion before we before we definitively told them we weren't inclined to do that. But that was my suspicion was we wouldn't be. Um, was th they would absolutely be bidding on continuing the service, but we just we know the price is <laughs> not going to stay this. They're not doing this to keep the price the same. Um, and then one other one other potential discussion. Um, I know there's some some history with this that I've not experienced, but the, the sheriff at least mentioned it in passing. Is whether it, you know whether there's an in-house option. Um, you know, if there'd be the, the possibility of doing that once we see what the what the costs I think, are. I think when to we look at it. it, and once you talk kitchen facilities and employees and retirements and healthcare, yeah. that the private sector was really the yeah. most efficient way to go, as far as this goes. Well, I believe in this one. They they do they the equipment is is at their. They maintain. Yeah, they maintain the equipment at their expense. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a it's. It is so. When you say in-house, you're talking. You're not talking about the inmates or the individuals. You're well, there's talking a lot of that already. County employees, right? There's, right. there's, there's already there's, employees to do some there's certain a, functions. There's a supervisory right. employee yeah. okay. that's there from Aramark, right? And and now obviously you can't just have one employee because we need a backup to that supervisory right. employee. Okay. Now yeah. Aramark can shuffle the deck a little bit better because they have yeah, a deeper I'd bench. Yeah, I'd rather continue how, private. Let me ask you. Given the, I, I presume some of the movement for them to change it is because of the price of uh well the supply of food uh, of, of their their, their materials and that's so forth. that's one of the components right, of right. that has the quality uh changed who monitors the quality of the food service uh, that they provide has that been reduced at all impact uh, they tried yeah. to reduce their costs that way um rebecca do you have any no complaints okay. there have been some issues at the at the juvenile facility yeah. Ron Stoller and I have chatted about okay. some of the quality issues, but I think those are corrected. Okay. Uh, they went through, I think it had to do with staffing, um, shortage too. But um, and in terms of the county home, uh, they've had some staffing issues there also with that contract, but uh, I think they've keep that back up. Good. They're fully staffed now. So. Um, there, there is, it is important, I think, to know, because you mentioned the, the food, uh, the cost issues. They have a CPI, a, a, an inflation adjustment in the contract that did go into effect mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year. And the, I guess the, the essence is where, where the price started relative to the, even the inflation adjustments that have been made, which have been, you know, sig significant relative to what the, you know, it's not, we're not talking two or 3%. I think what this past uh, amendment yeah, it was eight percent. So and that's still not enough. And for it's them. yeah, hmm. yeah, and and so okay. there's some, you know, th there is adjustment in there though. It's not like they're they're stuck in a three year contract with pre COVID pricing and and you know the the, the inflation adjustments have been part of it, but um, it's it hasn't been enough to keep pace well, according to what we're being told. My view, if they want to, there's conditions for them to be able to terminate the contract. They'll have to comply with our contract. We're I'm not going to help them. Right. Uh, do that. We just as long as we monitor the quality of the food and it's not diminished, we stick with the contract. And if we have to go out for bid, we go out for bid. I agree. Yep. And I think it's just a matter of realizing that when that when it does go out for bid, it the, it's going to go up. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think that was it for me. Did you wish for me to notify your own? Please do. Yeah, please do. I think they've been waiting for, I, we've, <laughs> we've put them off long enough for that I, answer. I gave you copies. I had gotten a second email from that Kirk Harris. Do you guys have any interest in participating in this? I, I, I mean, I, he's, the, it's the second time they're emailing me now. I, I. Can you explain for the record what this is? Yeah, it's yeah. Um, they're they're doing research on homeland security um, regarding cybersecurity services prioritized through the Ohio Comprehensive Cybersecurity Plan. Um, state of Ohio is requesting a letter of support from the counties for the state to provide targeted cybersecurity services. Um, at this point, they're telling us for the grant that they're using that this does not obligate us to any money, but. I didn't know if you had any. It, 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 
he wants me to email him back, so I told him that I would check with you guys to see if you had any interest in participating. Well, I guess the question comes up, do we want to do a support level? This is for federal funds for them right. to be able to use to implement some cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, I, certainly we can support them in their effort, whether we join or how we, after the fact, after the fact we utilize it, that's up to us and our IT department as so well as okay other elected officials. So you're okay with the initial letter of sure. support? Sure, sure. Are you okay? Yeah, I think that's, that, okay. that's a good strategy. Because he cl clearly me. states in this letter that there's no monetary Right, and we, and we do have I'm state agencies. Right Let's say Job and Family Services is basically operates, you know, their local employees through the state. So we have to be cognizant of mm -hmm. of our integration with state cybersecurity. So yep. I think we need to be supportive of what they're trying to do from the top down. Recognize that when we get into our individual departments, that really is up to us, the elected officials and our IT department. Right. So the, if you know, if we they come back with some big bill to big uh, you know dollar amount to participate then we'll have another serious discussion but this is just, yeah, just this is just for their grant they right. need to check this box yep getting okay. support from the counties for their grant application and so, yeah us offering support to the concept is what we're doing now if, mm -hmm. if it's a if, it, if there is some kind of a cost component then I'd expect to see a scope of work and all these other things that wh what are we actually getting for what they're asking us to pay for exactly so. agreed okay anybody else I will entertain a motion. Yeah, I'd like to move that we go into executive session to consider the compensation and employment of a public employee and to consider the sale of real property. Second. Roll. Hambly. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Wedick. Yes. Thank you. We will see you next week.